The following is a production of Phoenix Media. The views expressed do not necessarily represent those of the company or its advertisers and may contain language that's unsuitable for younger listeners. What's up, bees? Hello. Welcome to the Brit on Blast podcast, where we put everything and anything on blast. Britton, what is this week's roundup? So this week we have Vinny Lacido, uh, owner of Co Auto, and um, it was a pretty awesome interview. He was a very interesting man. He's insightful in a lot of different areas, um, and just learning about his life. I mean, I still carry a lot of the stuff that he said with me. Um, and so I'm really mm-hmm. excited for our listeners to listen to him. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I mean, he was very fascinating, fascinating character. I had met him once at a ladies night and then this was my first time getting to know him. So I, there were definitely moments where I was like, wait, say that one more time. Um, I feel like we took a lot away from him and that was fantastic. Um, you want to jump into like the week, what we got going on so we can explain to our listeners why we are laughing in the intro and really slow with our words. Yeah. So, I mean, this week I mean, it's rodeo week. So obviously we have our hats, Murdoch's hats at the rodeo. Um, and it's 8 AM to 7 30 PM every day. So to say that, uh, Bridget and I are spent would be the biggest understatement, um, ever. Um, but it has been such an amazing week. Like the outpouring of support that we've had has been incredible. And so, um, I really feel like it's kind of just been a great platform for Murdoch's hats and I'm just excited to see where we go from here. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really tired and I just feel like I'm running on fumes, but like five more days left of the rodeo, we got this and I mean, we're recording obviously, not in person because where are you and what are you doing? Yeah, I'm in Dallas. I've been here since Friday night. Um, we are here for Dallas market. So we are showing in a showroom, our very first ever showroom that I've ever worked with or anything like that. So we're working with, uh, a rep group called diverse marketing. We are, that's been the big surprise that I've been keeping. Um, so we have, we're working with 12 sales reps across eight states. And I am now in a permanent showroom out here in Dallas. So I came to see it, to set it up, to make sure it was all what we wanted it to be. And so for me, it's been, I have been working, I'm currently two hours ahead of you. Um, and I have worked a full day from 8 a.m. to um, like six, I think. Yeah. And honestly, I forgot how hard this was. Uh, young there, young me could do this well. Old me is tired and needs a nap, and all the alcohol and like I don't even want to drink because I'm like I can't. I used to come out here and drink the whole day away and like work and drink and sell and drink and and now I'm like I had one margarita at the happy hour event and I was like I'm done. I just would like to go take a nap, please. So uh, this has taught me that I'm old, I'm capable, and you know, there's that. Yeah, it's also, I mean, it's, this is such a cool big step for you guys. And it's emotional when you put your brand out Mm -hmm. there. And I, I mean, I feel it so hardcore. We're kind of in the same boat. Like, you know, the brand is you, it's all your blood, sweat and tears literally in this brand. Mm -hmm. And then you just wait for people to kind of approach it. And so this is you like showing your brand to the world. We're doing the same thing with Mm Murdoch's right now. I'm like, it's humbling, you know, I mean, as oh, much yeah. support that we've had, um, I mean, it's, it still is humbling, but Haven and Flex is such a proven success in so many channels and so many ways. It's just, you know, finding, it's just a different, it's a different venue. It's a different outlet for you. It's so it's hard. I feel you. Well, and it's retailers. So I keep telling everybody, like, not everybody I keep telling my mom, I'm like, I just need one 
like because a big thing is a lot of retailers have a ton of candles like they do they just do and that is like a risky business when you get into i remember when i sold jewelry like we had everybody sold delicate gold jewelry like bringing in another jewelry line is a risk for a retailer bringing in another candle line is a risk for a retailer so it's a different concept when we're home and i'm selling you know it's our customers it's our community they love us they appreciate us like they know what the brand is they care about mental health all of that stuff they really can get behind it these retailers are like, ah, uh, am I willing to take a risk on this new brand? I don't know if I'm willing to do that. And I can understand where they're coming from. But at the same time, how do you communicate to somebody if you brought in one minimum order of this, I can guarantee you that you will continue to reorder because we've had proven success with all of our local retailers and some external retailers too. I mean, one of my first accounts was an, an account in Aspen and they, you know, reordered consistently from us. So it's just one of those things is how do you prove yourself to another business owner? It's B2B. So it's a whole different ball game. And I'm grateful to have this opportunity and we'll see where it goes. Tomorrow is day one where it's open to the public um, and all the temporaries are open. So that's all of, you know, that's what people really love to go and walk through is temporaries. So, but yeah, absolutely You're great. Britain. You're going to kill it. Thanks. Yeah, well, all I'm, right. Well, do we want to get the show on the road? Yes, you guys invo- enjoy Vinny Lacido. He is just overall such a good guy, such a successful business owner. And one of my favorite things that he says in this episode is um, about valuing his employees. So listen for that when it comes up. Mm-hmm. Yep, definitely. He's a solid dude. And here it is. So, Britt. Because this is in your wheelhouse, why the Automobile Museum? I mean, you know, for me, it's about the cars all day long. I love cars. I like old cars, new cars, all the things. For me, the fact that they have the DeLorean here and the Batmobile in the same room is like, it's, it's like, a, it's ha- it makes my heart happy. Um, so that's why for me, but I think for like someone like us, like doing things with all of our friends, like yeah, 160 the of our close friends yes. could go to the theater. In any movie that you want, they have so many things to offer. The space camp for your kids, if you like need a little break or you want to look at the cars. Reno's just really lucky to have it. It's one of the biggest collections, I think, in the country, yeah. which is awesome. It's so cool. And the fact that it's here in the biggest little city is like the coolest thing ever. So yeah, grab a bottle of tequila yeah. and <laughs> come on into the theater. Yes, back to the future. Get all your friends, 160 of them, so the whole town of Reno. So everyone you know. <laughs> and watch a movie. Yep. You can find tickets at the uh, um, automuseum.org. Yeah. And yeah, that's where, that's where you go get your tickets. Perfect. Fun day. So Britt, why intentional candles for mental health? Because building healthy habits around your intentions can have a positive impact on not only your mental health, but your overall productivity. I wanted to create a premium non-toxic candle that reminded my customers that life is complex and we can live in the and space. Talking about mental health and mental illness doesn't always have to be scary or depressing. Uh, Sometimes it can be fun and enlightening. We are wildly unique and expansive creatures as we've talked about on the podcast before. And we can be many things in a day. And sometimes we just need to light a candle to remind ourselves who the fuck we are and what we are capable of. I 100% agree with that. Plus your candles smell so good and they fill up my whole house. I hear you have something special for our listeners. I do. I have a little promo for our bees. Y'all can head to havenandflux.com and use code BOB20 at checkout to get 20% off your order. I hope y'all enjoy. Vinny Lacido owns Co Auto, an auto repair shop here in Reno. Co Auto isn't just a normal auto shop. Vinny, as the owner and leader, goes above and beyond to give back to the community. So much so that he has featured he has been featured on the cover of Auto Inc. magazine for being community conscious, as well as winning the Vision Award, which is a national award given to the independent car repair business for their community involvement. Um, this business that he has created speaks for itself. On top of it all, Vinny is just an all-around good guy. He is quite the character. We were just talking about this before we started the show. Uh, he's into yoga, riding on his one wheel, well, actually competing 
on his one wheel. Um, acro yoga. Which can you just describe what that is real quick? Because I wanted to be clear. It's the skateboard that's on one wheel. Yeah. But so he like off roads. Yeah, that. he does. So it's like there's like a tire in the middle and then it almost looks like one of those hoverboards where you have to like balance Have you ever it. done those for surfing? I'm not going to ask you, Vinny, because I know you've probably 1000% done oh, it. Yeah. For surfing, you like get on those and it's like a conditioning thing, mm-hmm. but like on a wheel, I can't imagine. Anyway, keep going. He's incredible. He was on stilts on the one wheel. So anyways, this guy, he's, I mean, his physique is insane. He's just like really fit. He does acro yoga, kiteboarding and aerial skills is that so wow unbelievable so he is a man that knows how to work hard and play hard um i met Vinny in 2016 when i bought the fashion truck from him and hillary shivy who were partners at the time with the truck uh Vinny designed and completely built the truck inside and outside and um there's not a day that goes by in my business that i don't see his talents on full display um if you've shopped inside our truck you've seen the woodwork um you've seen all the details of like the metal and there's logos everywhere he just and it's still holding up and we have put so much wear and tear on that truck um but he does amazing work and he's so creative and he's so talented um he also taught me how to drive the truck um, when I first bought it and now the babe cave is down the street from co auto on Dickerson. So we're business neighbors. Um, it's just a really small world. And I'm so grateful that my path crossed with Vinny and Reno is lucky to have him here and just enriching our city all around. Vinny, thanks for being here. Let's get into it. Yeah. I'm pretty excited to learn more about you. Cause I, <laughs> well, I didn't realize I had even met him before. Cause he walked in and the last time I saw him, he was in a completely different like vibe. He was in a Murdoch's hat. Yeah, he was in a Murdoch's mm-hmm. hat. That's right. And he rocks it so well. Yeah. <laughs> Showed up to support ladies night. I didn't yeah. know about the truck either. So yeah, that's adorable. Yeah. Oh for my everybody here. Yeah, no. <laughs> Vinny's a badass and everyone knows him. Like people still come up to us and they're like, is Vinny here? I'm like, Vinny, Vinny made the truck. Vinny owned the truck for a second here, but we've had it for six years now. <laughs> great. Things are going great. <laughs> so you're not selling BLFT clothes? That's no. Not, no. no. <laughs> well, what did you do before you opened Coato? Well, directly before that, it was a fashion truck. Okay. And then before that, it was, I've worked in the automotive industry my whole life. So I was kind of doing that. Um, I was doing it under the table a little bit before I opened Co Auto and then realized I better become legitimate or maybe the government might find out what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, so when I opened Co Auto, it was just a matter of just changing it into an actual organization. And then I, my brother and I partnered together when we opened. I, re- I bought him out a couple of years ago, but um, we just turned it into a legitimate auto shop and then took it to the next level and became community conscious. So that's what the co represents is community conscious. And before that, that, I've done so many things from guiding whitewater kayaking trips and rafting trips and guiding snowmobile tours. And I worked for event production companies and uh, my brother and I started a painting business. We've started a lawn care service. So (laughs) I've done, done a ton of different work. Um, I've gotten paid to, do Cirque stuff like fire spinning and aerial silks and acro yoga. And, um, yeah, so I kind of just do whatever I can to That's wild. enjoy life. He, um, right. He, I don't even have words. I'm honestly at a loss. He is like one of those people that is like so well-rounded, but it took me a lot of time to kind of like, and I still, I don't have him figured out by any means, but like <laughs> just seeing him in different situations. Cause like, when it comes to your business, I would kind of consider you like a shark, like you do what needs to be done. And your shop is the cleanest car shop I've ever set my, like it is sparkly clean in there. When you go in the waiting room, there's all these, this like local art that hangs on the walls. It's kind of like this modern funky, almost burning man kind of feel. Um, there's murals on the inside of the shop. Like I've just never seen a car shop look like that. And his staff is so friendly. I mean, I just, and so I've seen him in that realm, business mode, which Mm -hmm. is different than normal businesses, but still like, you know, he runs a really clean and efficient business. And then I've seen him at festivals, like I was telling you about, 
Um, and he just, he, or like just cruising down Dickerson on his bike, on his one wheel, like he just does everything. And he's just really multifaceted. I think it's sick. I mean, all like my family, my cousin's trying to get into guiding right now. He wants to do, um, fly fishing, Oh, nice guiding for that. And then he was in the military for a long time. And then I've just recently met somebody who does fire spinning. Yeah. Am I getting that right? Yep. And I had no idea what yep. any of that was. I feel like I'm just like meeting all these people who do all the same things. I'm like, y'all, how did this all like who woke up and was like, I'm going to f- spin fire. <laughs> but it's like a sick and thing. Usually it's it not is. someone who's a business owner that's like crushing it. Right, right. Right. No, I think it's cool. And that's like the whole point of Brit on Blast is we wanted to put members of the community on blast. Like people that you see because it is so different. You see me when I'm working my business and it's a completely different person than what you see on the side. And like nobody knows about my hobby. Well, now they do. They fucking know everything. <laughs> <laughs> but like that's what we wanted to do for community right. members who are you know a huge part of the community especially somebody who gives back like you um i know you had a question yeah so i mean just giving back to the community is obviously built into your business model um there's five different ways that give back but the give the car giveaway program um the woman wheels and whiskey and the carbon foot pr- footprint program. Um, talk about these and why they're so important to your business. Sure. So, uh, we do have five programs. Uh, you did mention one of them earlier. It was, uh, the waiting room, our art, gal- it's a rotating art gallery and we rotate out artwork quarterly. We don't take any commission from the sales. It's just to give artists exposure. And it also beautifies my space and are the space that everybody works in. Um, so that goes back to the artist. Uh, we have the women wheels and wine and i will be doing a women wheels and whiskey because that's just going to bring a different type of crowd i'm that crowd yes. yeah yes. we'll be there <laughs> and you're um, into cars i was gonna yeah. well and then i'm like do i ask these questions now but i have a jeep and i do all the work on it myself but yeah. i'm like as a business owner not able to keep doing that so and sure. there's some things i don't know how to do yeah so i'm like have to get some work done on the jeep do you guys do work on jeeps right? absolutely okay yeah so it's my baby. So <laughs> what, what kind of Jeep? Cause uh, we'll get to that. Um, yeah, th- there's finish, some, there's, finish your program. There's, there's some Jeeps that, uh, they don't even supply parts for anymore. So there's oh, it's some a newer we don't. Jeep. Excellent. Yeah. It's a real, uh, well, good for you working on your own stuff. And the, the, the reason we do that is to empower women like you and others that have no clue what they're doing with just some knowledge, just some yep. education, just so they feel comfortable wherever they go, whether it's my shop or another shop that they have the right language to Mm -hmm. use and the verbiage and just can feel confident about what they're asking for so they don't get taken advantage of or at least don't feel like they're being taken advantage of and can Mm -hmm. stand their own ground so it just helps identify certain things and educate i mean and it's super important to be able to change tire on the side of the road like yes i don't think that that's i mean i look at britain because i'm like keep telling her like, we need to teach you how to do that. Because like, if your car breaks down and you don't have service, like people forget that like you could be going to Fernley and have that issue. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, maybe I'm the only one going off into the middle of nowhere, but like you should know how to fix the basic things on your car. If you can't get to AAA or, you know, you don't want to be stranded anywhere for any period of time. So, right. And there's a lot of people, men alike, and I take Mm -hmm. men in the class just as well, but they, that don't know even where their spare tire tools are. You know, not a, not let alone like how to do it. They don't know where the tools are. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of instances or occasions where you really shouldn't be doing it yourself. Right. Maybe you're parked on a hill or a side mm-hmm. hill and the, the jack they supply for you is pretty minuscule. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it'll get the job done. But in the wrong conditions, you'll end up hurting yourself Absolutely. where you should have just called AAA or uh, let somebody professional do it. So yeah. there and that's kind of some of the stuff we go over. Um, so then some of our other programs like you mentioned to reverse your carbon footprint that's uh that's for the hippies out there (laughs) so what that is is every oil service we perform we have a tree planted in your honor through the arbor day foundation and that's just in throughout the u.s they plant trees and um yeah just to reverse your carbon footprint a little bit we have the veterans car giveaway program so every year we give a car to a local veteran in need and (laughs) Um, we have a center that determines who that veteran is. And so we don't have to do any vetting ourselves. We just know it's going to a good needing vet. So we just give them that car with no strings attached. It's like so emotional last year when you did it. I mean, I just like, you just get connected. Like you, it's such a 
feel good story. Yeah, I love doing that. And and the whole crew just loves being a part of that because all of them get their hands on that car and fix it up. And, you know, we go from tip to tail and just make sure it's a good car, reliable, something that they can use for a good amount of time. So um, we love that program. Probably my favorite. Actually, I think my favorite is a high school internship program. We have a couple high school students that come in and sometimes we have one depending on what time of year it is. But right now, uh, we've got a couple and this one young lady she started when she was 15 she's 16 now um when she showed up she didn't really even know how to use a push broom and it, we kind of giggled and i looked out in the shop and i was like hey look at zoe it's so cute and <laughs> so the, the tech looked and we were just giggling for a second then he went over and helped her you know and showed her how to use it properly well months later that same tech had her rebuilding his audi motor so she literally tore down an engine and put it back together and that Audi is running in his car. So she's not working on our clients' cars, uh, although she does get her hands on there when she's supervised, but she's, you know, rebuilt this motor for our tech for, with a, an Audi engine. I mean, that's next level. Yeah. So she's just so into it and just loves coming in and working. And um, so she's just an intern and, and just thrives there. So I love seeing that. I love seeing the growth. No, I have like full body chills. You would, that's like my vibe. Britain, tell us what BLFT is all about because you know it's my favorite place to shop. The Biggest Little Fashion Truck is a family owned and operated boutique on wheels. We got started five years ago because I had this deep desire to make women feel more confident. And I found out that one of the many ways you can enhance your confidence was through clothing. Hence our why, confidence through clothing. We love some confidence in our lives. We pride ourselves in bringing back that old school expertise in customer service by providing an experience, whether it be at our pop-up events around town. We love the pop-up events. I'm at those with her all the time and they are fire. Or we have a storefront, the Babe Cave. We just want each and every babe to feel better and be ready to be seen after shopping with us. Shop us online at the Babe Cave or our pop-up events at local businesses around town. We can't wait to see you and a little something special we have for you. Use promo code BOB20 for 20% off your purchase online. Hell yeah, I'm gonna be shopping today. My dad started teaching me how to like work on cars when I was my dad and my grandpa when I was like super young. And we've talked about this with Phil, which will air at the end of this month, but like, or the end of July. And I don't even know when it's going to air. Forget I've said any of that. But point being is that that gave me so much confidence then when I would go into, and the internship is obviously different. Like she's trying to go forward and, but to know how to work on your car gives you so much confidence when you're driving your car. Like almost to deterrent, like when you smell certain smells on the road, you're like, is that my car? Is that somebody else's car? Like what's going to like that sound? Is that my car? Is that somebody else's? And I drove like beat up cars until I bought this Rubicon for myself. And I think that the confidence, especially as women that you can gain, and this goes back to the women wheels and wine is that being able to go into a shop, my ex-husband walked into a shop one time and he had a Prius and we're like leaving. I, he comes back home and he was just supposed to be getting spark plugs done. It was like $700. And I was like, what, what do you mean it was $700? Like they only had the car for like three hours. Like what did they do to the car? Like what could they have? What kind of spark plugs did they buy? <laughs> like, because spark plugs are like six bucks a pop and you only need six of them. So like they were dipped in gold. Yeah. It was only three hours of labor. So like, what are you talking about? So just even like giving people that, you know, I was able to know that. So then I went into the shop and yelled at the guy, but I think that like, like that's important. Up? Yeah. It was yeah. like, how many, uh, like, what's explain up? Explain this to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and having the confidence and knowledge to just know that, you know, maybe they did pull the wool over your eyes or maybe right. they didn't. Right. Maybe they, they were legitimately, you know, doing some type of repair that was that expensive. I don't right. know what it was. But, but. <laughs> right. But to even know, right. Yeah. It's like yeah. to even know like, okay, well, what else? Like when you look at getting a diagnostic, even it's like, okay, but do I really need those things? Like how many yeah. of that? Cause I've also had that happen where you go, you get a di- diagnostic and they they give you like two grand worth of work that you need to get done. It's like, no. And we, you know, we're going to do that same thing. And in the sense that when you come in, 
you know, you could tell me you need something, but I'm not just going to replace it until I've done an analysis mm -hmm. because it does us both a favor. Because if I do replace that part and it doesn't fix it, then I'm the bad guy or uh, vice versa. If, if we tell you it's something and we replace that part and it doesn't fix it, well, then I'm on the hook for it. Mm -hmm. So I've got to fix it correctly. But, you know, that just gives us the ability to uh analyze it properly mm -hmm. and then you know we will give you a list and it's all digital when you come in so you're going to get a text message it's, and you can open up a text or an email scroll through pictures and videos and explanations from the technician and it's going to be in green yellow or red mm -hmm. and that's clear of like what needs to be done now and what doesn't but mm -hmm. we're never trying to hard sell we're just trying to be your advocate and your advisors to let you know what's recommended mm -hmm. and you know it's your choice to fix things or not Absolutely. we're not trying to push it down anybody's throat it's just a matter of you know having the educate having the knowledge of what is wrong mm -hmm. and some people don't want to hear that but at least they know yeah the education is key okay yeah. well let's get back to giving back to the community because sure. that's like really really exciting shit have so we, have we hit all five programs i think so women's car care clinics high school internship programs veterans car giveaway local art display and uh reverse your carbon footprint yeah i mean okay but as a business owner you're pretty busy right and for you to like implement those into your business and still take time to do all of those it just like speaks volumes about how much you do care about this community and like people always say they want to give back but giving back can be hard in a time mm -hmm. suck and it's like you just it's just woven into the fabric of your business which is it is it speaks volumes about who you are well, as a person you. yeah for sure i mean in educating your customer because that's right. not to say like i want to be clear that like there are times when you need to have like a couple grand worth of work done on your car especially right. with my old ass cars that i've had but like that being said educating your customers that's a service that you provide that is not provided across all areas and we always say like i just sell candles like at the end of the day like if i don't give back or and it's not that's not why i give back but like there's more to the brand than just a candle. Sure. Right? And so like being able to give back to the community, being able to give back to whatever you're passionate about is really important. And the education piece, I just like, that is such a cool thing. Cause you're making a huge difference. Huge in difference. Individual lives. And I love seeing the looks on the faces too. And they're all, we always have such a good time. It's That's so awesome. much fun. Uh, yeah. And I, you know, I do other things as well. Like I'm in the Reno Rotary club and I sit on the board for gratis gives and you know i sit on the board for the chamber of commerce and just trying to give back in as many ways as possible so you just make a ton of free time as a projector with just lower energy you just yeah <laughs> i don't know about i am a projector i uh but i don't have low energy no clearly not <laughs> yeah. clearly not seriously no, maybe it's the adrenaline and i have to say though i have to say that without the team that i have right now in place at my shop i wouldn't be able to do the things that i do and they know my goal is to work on the business rather than in the business so uh without them you know my team leader matt who's just incredible you know the my top tech all my techs all my advisors everybody there is just what allows me to do what i do you know this um leads right into our next question you have over 10 people on your staff in obviously such a great culture how do you keep everyone motivated and keep the company in a, a just a great place to work for well um number one is communication mm. so if you don't have communication within your organization then things are going to fall aside and people are going to be feeling like they can't talk or whatever that case is so we have a weekly meeting and that's held by my team leader um, I do also have, so that's like an organ, operational kind of meeting. And then once a month I do a meditation yoga meeting and I lead that one. And so, you know, to see technicians and that e typically egoic kind of mentality in this, uh, arena, watch them drop that and really enjoy the meditation and ask for it and then enjoy the yoga and, you know, want more of that. That's powerful. So that's just kind of, you know, bringing us all back into a little bit of a balance there. Um, so that's super helpful. Also, we do a lot of continuing education. So paying for their education. And I took everybody that could go to Kansas City to that Vision Festival this year. I say festival, but Vision uh, Conference, which is like the largest automotive, independent automotive conference in the country. 
Um, Is that who awarded you guys the award? Yeah, in 2018, we were the Vision Facility of the Year. So it's a national award. Yeah. And uh, for our professionalism and our giving back to the community and the way we operate our business, uh, we won that award. big time. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it was pretty awesome. We were the first on the West Coast to win it. Wow. And that linked me up into uh, just a lot of our peers that are doing the same thing. You know, there's not a lot of shops out there that are going to education, higher education. You know, they just kind of run with you know whatever they know mm-hmm. and don't get any further education. But that's super important for these new vehicles and the adapting to electric vehicles and mm-hmm. that type of stuff. So. God, that's right. I totally just spit because I refuse to get an electric vehicle. So I just yeah, yeah, totally blacked Same. out. I'm like, Same. if I can't like, I can't depend on that. Like, yeah, no, I don't want to. I don't want to do it. And then a lot of people think that they're helping our CO2s and everything by getting an electric vehicle, but they forget that they've got to charge that electric vehicle. And if they're coal, like if their city runs on coal, you know, then that's co2 is just as well when you got to plug that thing in to charge it up so right. there's a balance there and where does the battery go when you're done yeah and then <laughs> and then would it take to mine all that lithium think of how much carbon we use to just mine the lithium with all the gas powered vehicles and big equipment that we use to mine it so that's something to certainly consider I mean, and selfishly, all those road trips, like for me, I'm like, oh my, what, you need me to stop every hundred yeah, miles? Yeah. Like hard uh, pass. Uh, no. So, <laughs> so that my crew, you know, I pay them well. So that's important. You value them. I value them. And uh, that's, I think that's what keeps them happy. You know, like I, everybody's got their different needs and some of them it's money, some of them it's time. So I try to listen and adapt to whatever each individual needs i can't where i'm literally sounds like, like a dream boss. yeah and i'm sitting here like i'm learning a lot from you yes, right now because i'm about to hire like we're taking huge well at this point i guess i could talk about it but we're hiring 12 salespeople. oh wow based out of dallas texas and i used to manage a sales team of 15 for a major um, jewelry company and so i know how to do it but it's like it's like, okay, but now this is my company. Like, how do I want it to be represented? And this is an outside sales rep group. So it's going to be a little bit different, but as of this morning, I'll be hiring on July in July, like my right hand man, basically. And yeah. that's somebody who I want to like grow with the company. And it's like, okay, well, how do I create like a really, cause what I'm doing at this stage in the business is not always fun. Like it's going to be hard and being transparent about that with her, but also being like, I want to give you what you need. So like, yeah. what is it that you valued? And I asked her that this morning, like, do you value time or do you value money? Because which one, like we can sort that out. Yeah. And that's so. really important to know. And right. for you, I would recommend reading the book, uh, rocket fuel. Okay. So rocket fuel is it mostly in most businesses, you have the visionary, the visionary created the business. They work in the business. They work so much that all of a sudden they can't continue doing the visionary type stuff because they're so involved with, organization and logistics and you know making sure every you know all the boxes are checked so that's when they need to hire what's called an integrator Mm -hmm. so that's rocket fuel when you have a visionary and a solid integrator and the integrator integrates everything that you know they kind of keep the visionary in check for one uh like uh yeah, yeah it's a little out that's a little out there, you know, a visionary not usually possible. has That's yeah. not possible. Right. And sometimes it is, but at least it keeps that visionary in check. And then uh, the integrator is the one that want, does just that, integrates. So that's a super important book. Okay. That's, I just wrote it down. We're Same with Profit First. Anybody listening that runs a business needs those two books. Profit First is a book that will, it's just a methodology and a way to run your company where you're taking profit out of the company first rather than paying everything and seeing what money you have at the end. Mm. So we all started a business to make money. So profit first is a way you can make sure to actually make money. Right. No shame about that. (laughs) Not at all. Right. Um, Yeah. Well, you're full of ton of knowledge. No wonder your business is getting these awards and running so well. Seriously. All right, so you guys know that I live for Western wear, specifically my boots and my hat. So I want to talk a little bit about 
a brand new brand that is new to Reno, Nevada, and is from our beautiful babe over here. So, Britton, tell us what Murdoch's is. Well, first of all, hats have been one of my truest loves since I was a kid. I swear I had a hat on in every single picture as a child. And then they quickly became a BLFT signature. We couldn't find the hat that was just perfect. And so we decided to design our own. Murdoch's is a family brand that started in the great state of Nevada in the 1950s. My great grandparents started Murdoch's Western Wear. Fast forward 60 years, the Murdoch sisters recreate this homegrown brand by curating a hat line that embodies the spirit of Nevada. We were raised in this amazing state and we watch a Nevadan's ability to put in a hard day's work on the ranch followed by a hard night's play at the casinos. We pulled inspiration from the everyday beauty around us, the sunsets, Lake Tahoe, the mountains, and the forests. I'm not going to lie. I have full body chills right now because you hit so many nails on the head just now. Like there's nothing that screams Reno, Nevada more than family and community and a little bit of Western. So the fact that you put all of our favorite things together and then you made it all about like bringing back the roots of your family brings me so much joy. Y'all need to check out Murdoch's hats. Where do you find them? Murdoch's hats and apparel.com. We love it. Go shop y'all. So obviously we're talking about your employees and that obviously like, how do you get what you want to leave with your customers? How do you get your team because they're working in the business to, to get, to leave the customers with what you want them to leave them with? Does that make sense? Yeah. And that's, you know, that's constant reminders. It's constant education. And once I, like I started with communication, Mm -hmm. you know, I'll, I'll go into the shop, I'll sit in the advisor seat and greet customers as they come in and then send them to my advisors and listen. Mm -hmm. And if they're not representing the company, like I'd like them to, then I will usually I'll talk with the manager, the team lead. He has the same moral compass I do. And that's why I love him so much. Like he sees things like I would as a business owner. And if he has a question about something or doesn't think he's going to make the right decision, he'll ask. But You know, it's just through a lot of communication and education on why we do what we do and the value of what we do, Mm -hmm. you know, because Coato, we're not the cheapest shop. You're not going to come get the cheapest oil service. Why? We don't use the cheapest oil. Mm -hmm. We don't use the cheapest products. We have the highest level trained technicians. So you can't have all of that and then be cheap. So, Mm -hmm. you know, you're going to pay more, but you're going to get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. And so when we are charging like that, my staff needs to understand that they need to share that value with the client. And so I'm just constantly there reminding them and helping them and kind of figuring out better ways to educate our clients. What's the number one thing you want to leave your customers with? Just a feeling of comfort Mm -hmm. and trust. You know, Mm -hmm. if they, it's not often I've worked in the automotive industry my whole life and there's so many times somebody, you know, come in, pay two, three, four hundred bucks and leave angry. Then they pay 1500 bucks and they're super upset. In my company, I have people paying two, three, four thousand dollars every day Mm -hmm. and they leave so happy and they're so pleased because they know the service that was done was done correctly. And for some reason, nobody's perfect. If it's not, we're going to take care of it. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not just going to be like, oh, sorry, we messed up. Like we we're human. We're all human. So we're going to stand behind our work. This is like. Getting your car repaired is something that is like, I think has a negative connotation to Mm -hmm. it. And people, I mean, it's not fun. You buy a fancy new car and the second that it's, you know, up for service, you're like, frick, because (laughs) you don't want to put more money into it. Right. Right. But you like completely turn that upside down and you put a positive on a negative in everything that you know or think you know about car shops, you shatter those. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, and I just like, the trust thing is so big. And I'm so happy that you said that. Cause for me, like, and as you heard me say, like the Rubicon is my baby. Like I mm-hmm. told myself, I started working on cars with my dad when I was like 11 years old. And I told myself I wanted a all black Jeep Rubicon, like four door. And I was going to like get it all cleaned up and like do all the things to it. And I bought it in 2021. And I was so excited. Like that <laughs> is like, because before that I had hand-me-downs, like it was like whatever I could get my hands on from like my dad handed me down a car. 
I ended up, my first car that I ever had was, we bought a Chevy off a of Ford lot and it literally shook. Wow. At, like it was never in alignment. So like the wheel literally shook as I like drove it off the lot. And I looked at my mom and I was like, my papa bought it for me. And he was, it was like $5,000. And I was like, we are so fucked with this car mom <laughs> and i blow put, up no i put like 20k into that into oh, that wow. it was a chevy Aww. equinox oh i'm sorry and yeah. those are the worst you cars it, yeah. they are like <laughs> truly and i i'm not kidding you now that i've said it if you and i'm sorry if you own a, a chevy equinox but you do own the worst car <laughs> and it, i see them broken down all the time yeah. like all the time they're broken down and right. so i put so much money into that car i bought my ex-husband a prius because that's what he wanted Never again will I do that. Questionable. Um, divorced him and the car. <laughs> and then I ended up with a Jeep Loretto, which was a great car. I called her Hank the Tank. Yeah. But she required a lot of work, but it was fun because I got to work on her myself. So now I'm at a point like I've had the car for a year. She's at over 100,000 miles or 50,000 miles. She just hit. And I'm like, okay, I got to take her in for like service. Nice. Just follow the maintenance program. <sighs> and you can take it to Co Auto. You don't have to go to the dealer. Well, I don't want to go to the dealer. So yeah. that's my thing is I'm like, I'm not taking it to the dealer because I had an emergency situation where I took it into the dealer because it is a used one, so yeah. 2018. And um, it, I got it back and I was like, the problem's not fixed. Like, I'm going to have to go in here. Like, I have a tear in my belt right now. My it's not serpentine. uncommon that happens where, you know, clients think the dealer is the, the, the best solution and they're not even nearly as educated as a lot of the independent automotive shops. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, really consider that you don't have to take it to the dealer, even if it's under warranty, mm -hmm. unless you're trying to do like a recall or a warranty issue, we can do all your maintenance and repairs mm -hmm. and still keep you under a valid warranty. Cause right. we're going to use OEM parts, especially if you're under warranty. Yep. OEM is original equipment manufacturer. So mm -hmm. yeah. nice. she is not under warranty. Do That's you know what? I was like, I'm never using any of that. I don't good like for you. That's a smart move. Do you know what my first car was? No. Yeah, I've never said it. A Chevy Equinox. Saturn. No, it was a 1993 Toyota Land Cruiser. Oh, sweet. It was badass. I wish yeah. I would have kept it. Yeah. It ran, it was so, I mean, it did have an extra power button and it guzzled gas, but yeah. other than that, I would be like going to my car and just like hit it and be like, <laughs> but it was fun. Um, okay, well, what can we expect from Coato in the future? And is there any other dreams you want to pursue or like where, where are Vinny and Co Auto going, I guess? Well, so I am going to continue to work on the business. My goal is not to have to work in it, but to be able to go into the business and uh, pat on the back, talk to the guys, really find out what it is they need and have the time to uh, take care of them. You know, because a lot of my staff have family and, you know, they don't necessarily you know have somebody to talk to all the time so i just want to be that person for them and then in the future what you'll see is us dive into the new technologies you know the electric cars we're already working on hybrids we've worked on teslas but you know i'm uh, seeking a technician that really wants to get into the electric vehicle realm which is a whole new realm so uh, that's something you can certainly see us evolve into awesome yeah what about you anything like belize or <laughs> so yes my wife and i also teach yoga and uh we have a yoga retreat in belize so we take yearly well we're trying to do it twice a year now where we take groups of folks down and do yoga it's cultural immersion and adventure we do all kinds of things and we just you know yoga is part of it but we also party and have a great time when we're there. Nice. <laughs> Cold balance. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's yeah. awesome. I feel like you left already so many tips and tricks, like already have our book references. Yeah, that's great. But we do a thing where we ask a bunch of semi rapid fire questions to find out like things that you can leave behind with our customer. We love a practical application around here. Yeah. So do you want to start those off, Britton? Sure. What is your daily routine? Well, typically, um, I, what I like to do is get up and start with meditation. And I'm not going to say I do that every day, but that's when I feel best. I've started with meditation and, you know, 10, 15 minutes. And then um, usually it's like feed the dogs and then get ready uh, for whatever the day brings. Um, 
you know, there's coffee involved usually, and there's not much of a routine. I don't have a, like a set routine. Cause every day is different for you. It is. And you know, I'm such a, I don't know. I'm just on the edge of my seat all the time. Yeah. You're spontaneous. I'm so spontaneous and you know, I'll have something totally planned one day and then completely do something different. And that's just how I roll. God bless your wife. Yeah. She's great. (laughs) I don't know how I do it without her. Oh, first thing I do when I wake up is I lean over and kiss her on the forehead. Good God. Wow. Gotta go. (laughs) Okay. Is there a non-negotiable in your day that you like have to do every day? Uh, Non-negotiable for me in the day. That's a good one. No, no. Um, Just be honest with myself. Fucking love this guy. Like literally just goes by your moral compass and you just, whatever the day brings, you're like, let's fucking do it. Be honest with myself. (laughs) (laughs) That's yeah. Wow. Deeper. I thought you were going to say like coffee. (laughs) No, no, there's because there's days I go without that. So there's not something I do every day. Do you have a vice? Like, um, not really. I do smoke weed. Okay. I don't do it daily. So no, it's not, but it's not like a vice. Do you have to like do some type of physical activity every day? No, you don't. You can chill. I mostly when I'm in Belize, I can chill. Gotcha. It's much harder to chill when I'm here. Yeah. But with business and everything, sometimes it's just like, I don't want to do anything. Yeah. I just chill at I home feel that. all yeah. day and like a hermit. But that's uncommon, but it will happen. Yeah. That's the thing. I'm in that right now. I'm like, I just want to be at, people are inviting me to do things. And I'm like, I'll be in the house in my bed <laughs> reading well, a book. Yeah. Unless you're working on your biz right now, then yeah, I can. you're enter- Yeah, I feel that too. Um. Okay. So how do you revitalize yourself? to get through the long hauls in business and in just in life? Oh, that's easy. I, a lot of massage. I, yeah. I have probably 10 different massage therapists in town. Uh, I use acupuncture, um, cryotherapy, um, yoga is definitely meditation, yoga, infrared saunas, just self care. I mean, health and wellness. Like oh, yeah. this guy is like the epitome of health and wellness. That's- right. Yeah. I mean, look at him. I like he's jacked. You guys uh, can't see him. No, but like I know. His art, he's jacked. Oh, I honestly, <laughs> well, and then you said stilts on the one wheel. I yeah. saw it. I seen it on his <laughs> on his Instagram. She seen it. I seen it, and I was like, the actual, yeah. I was like, this. I've never seen that. But well, honestly, I haven't I seen a one wheel. Else. I don't think yeah. people are doing that. They're not. There's like, you nobody know what? else. How much coordination it. does that take? A lot. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, so I'm like perfect is what he's saying. <laughs> I didn't say <laughs> I'm that. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Did you do the Italian fest on stilts? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I saw you then too. Cause I'm like, I feel like I've seen you a couple different times. I did you. it once. It wasn't this last year. Oh, then maybe it wasn't you. But was he doesn't, well, were you dressed up as the Italian guys? I, I wore something. I don't remember what I yeah. wore that time. No, I'm not the Italian guys. That yeah. You see. That's why I was like, no, he's not that, that but wasn't. he's, he's gone rogue. <laughs> <laughs> um, what would you do other than co-auto if you were to do something else? Um, I like just doing things that take people out of their element. And that's why I guide whitewater rafting tours and snowmobile tours. So anything of that nature, even yoga takes people out of their element. You know, people typically get caught in this pattern and I like breaking that pattern and helping them realize that there's some fun shit out there that they can do and outside of their comfort zone, outside of their comfort zone. Yeah. Well, you're breaking down like an all red, like I I think we talk about this all the time because I have like a very strong feeling about like men being able to do shit that like whatever they want to do and not have to have this like very masculine appeal, which like you're doing in the auto industry, which is like one of the hardest, like that is such a masculine industry. And then you're over here saying like, well, we meditate as a group and like, you know, I want to be there for these guys, be somebody that they can talk to. Like, that's such an important thing to do. Like, it's just, it's so sick, like in a good way. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Yeah. It's very well-rounded. Um, if you could do anything else, what would you do? Get people out of their comfort zones. Yeah. Oh, did Why, we, yeah. Did I black out? It's okay. That's okay. Okay. Tell us about an experience where you learned something that you still carry with you. Uh, so I shattered my heel bone in 2009. Oh. I was snowboarding and I dropped off a cliff and I blew my heel up and 
I was out for two years on and off out of surgeries in and out of surgeries. And, um, through that I learned, well, how to be patient, but also like the very special thing that happened was my roommate at the time would take care of me day in and day out. And then I fell in love with her and married her. So, yeah. Wow. Silver lining. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I mean, a lot to unpack there and we're low on time, but uh, that's a really sweet story. Okay. So what's one thing you wish you were better at? I wish I was better at choreographed dancing because I love to dance. Like I can rip up a dance floor, but if I have something to think about or if I'm trying to count steps or Mm -hmm. trying to follow something, I suck. I mean, like I I look horror. I look like more of a free flow. Yeah, I'm a free flow artist. But if I could do choreographed dance, I'd like to because then I could do more performing arts and more performances and that type of stuff. But it's just not in me that and playing musical instruments. I it's not in me. I know. I admire people. Yeah, I admire people. I I mean, I'm tone deaf. Like I (laughs) I have zero hope in that area but i admire it so much and when you see someone just shredding you're just like damn yeah it's so cool it is i feel like we already know this but what's your why my why yeah my why is just to impact people in a positive way Mm -hmm. and you know have some type of legacy that people think back and you know want to be a part of just the joy i'm just constantly trying to uh, stay positive be happy enjoy Mm -hmm. life you know even through the the hardships i feel like that definitely shows throughout everything that you've just shared with us where it's like you're trying to give back to the community and be a positive force for your team yeah Yeah. he walks so like you don't just say it like you truly live it and i mean through your business and just your life Mm -hmm. and how you live um so we ask this last question to all of our guests. Um, if you could give one piece of advice to someone starting out in business or just a rule of thumb to live by, what would that be? That's a good question. A rule of thumb, uh, follow your gut. Like if your mind's telling you something and your gut's telling you something else to listen to your gut, because that's where your true mind is really. Um, if, if your stomach starts turning and it doesn't feel right, then it's not right. So really listen and connect with and not just your mind, but how you feel, how your gut feels and, and follow your gut. <laughs> yeah. It's a very yeah. projector answer, actually. It really yeah. is. But yeah. I love it. I do too. No, I love it. Because that's something that I'm trying to do right now where it's like, okay, just slow down and like listen to your body. Like what it's telling you to do is the direction you should take. Sometimes yep. you have to have that quiet moment to slow down enough to where you can have that feeling um, and be aware of it. Yeah. Otherwise, you just like shelf it and you're just like push forward. <laughs> <laughs> you're like ignoring yeah. it. You're like, there's fires in the background. You're just like, but I, this is where I'm going. Yeah. Always yeah. catches up to you. Yeah. It, it always comes back. <laughs> Once again, that comes back to meditation. Just yep. sitting yeah. with yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, yoga to end on, at least for me, yoga was designed so that people could meditate. So yoga was created so that you could sit for a long period of time and not fidget, not move and be able to sit with yourself and disconnect from your body in a sense so that your mind can also shut off god that's so important yeah i could have used that last night when i couldn't sleep at 2 (laughs) a.m but here we are i was just like welcome you look great thank you thank you um well Vinny, you are i mean full of knowledge and i i knew you were going to be a great interview just based off of what i do know about you but i got to learn so much more and that was such a treat and i think that our listeners are going to take even if it's just one chunk of what you said, um, and it will definitely enhance their their lives. So thank you for being here. Yeah, Thanks seriously. Thanks for having me, both of you. Thank and you. And check yeah. out Coauto. Where can our listeners yeah. find you? Well, we're on uh, coautonv.com. Uh, we also have some amazing videos. So um, we do some funny videos. So check out our Instagram, and that's Coauto Reno. And then uh, Facebook is Coauto NV. And then. Um, yeah, that's what, find us on Dickerson Road. Really unique road. Come check out the local artwork. If you don't have any work to do on your car, you can just come check out the shop. Yeah, artwork. Yeah. And shop at the Babe Cave while you're at it. Yeah, <laughs> I know. You... I'm like looking for a proper er, space over there for Haven and Flux. Ooh, so. How big? Please. We'll talk. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, I can make your space smell real good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, y'all. You know the drill. Follow along, Brit on Blast, and find us at BLFT Reno and Haven in Flux and Murdoch Hats and Apparel, wherever you're on social media. Um, if you guys like the show, subscribe and review Brit on Blast wherever you're listening. We love y'all. Thanks for coming. Cheers. Bye, y'all. <laughs>